Hello to you, this is Pilan Daily Culture and we are in the Royal Castle in Warsaw. Just look at this place, how fabulous it is. And here with me is Alicia Jakubowska, the curator of the paintings in the castle. Thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome. And we are talking about women, women who were connected to this place, lived here, or her dear portraits are in the castle and we can still watch them here. So who are we going to talk in this episode? Well, another Polish queen and of Jacqueline dynasty. So in Polish, Anna Jagielonka. So um, in, we were discussing the life of uh, first female ruler of Poland, Queen Hedwig and now Queen Anna. So um, contrary to Hedwig, she became a queen when she was 52 years old. So she was, uh, we may say she was waiting all her life uh, to, to become a ruler. And again, she was not a consort queen, but she was in a position of king. So she became queen of Poland after her brother's death and uh, he did not have children. So she was chosen to be a queen and it was accepted by Polish nobles, which was important at the time. And um, she was the queen who in her previous life, she lived actually at the castle here in Warsaw for 10 years. And she cared for the city. Uh, she was very uh, connected to that, um, that region with Mazovia. And she, uh, for example, she built um, uh, a bridge across the Vistula River, which was quite an event at the time because it was five met 500 meters long and it was the longest bridge in Europe at that time. And uh, Vistula River was really like a wild and white river. So she cared for, um, for the country and um, she was uh, really involved uh, in Mary also in many charity works, like um, she raised the, the brotherhood um, of St. Anna. She was um, like uh, many women at the time, uh, religiously devoted. And um, again, her, her life was, um, was very special because she was like the two women who, who ruled. And um, there's one thing that I wanted to, to also to discuss. I mean, many, many people, unfortunately, when, um, when discussing her life, start with, um, with describing her as ugly. And this is deeply saddening because, um, well, this is not what we should focus on, her appearance. Well, people are different, different and uh, it's really deeply personal whether we judge somebody beautiful or ugly. Uh, and this is um, not a factor that we should consider when discussing what she has achieved. Um, and uh, just to support um, that idea, well, people, people often look at her at the portrait we, we have here in the castle. And Which she is not is, the most fortunate, I would say, well, for her. She is uh, 62 at that portrait. So at that time, women who had 60, two years old. Of course, that she was very old and the fact she that she lived. She was very old and um, you can imagine uh, women were dying very young and not many of them managed to survive to that age because they usually died at, um, at childbirth. And uh, so being 62 and being a queen of Poland, it was really something. And the portrait that we are actually discussing uh, depicts her as an elderly woman. And she's, so uh, she is really like an um, old woman at the time. And secondly, the way she is dressed, it was like the fashion of that time. So every woman at that age would be looking like this, in dark clothes, her, her hair covered uh, with a veil, uh, not much skin um, that could be really seen, actually just, just the face and, and hands. And um, so there is a lot of misjudgment regarding her. And um, I believe we should look at her deeds and um, 
probably one of the most important things is that she promoted her nephew to be the next uh, king of Poland. And again, just like Hedwig laid foundation for Polish and uh, po uh, Polish Lithuanian uh, Commonwealth, so Queen Anna laid foundation for the rule of Vasa dynasty in Poland, which lasted over 880 uh, um, years. So again, uh, so even though she didn't have yeah. children herself, yeah. she started a founded a dynasty which ruled yeah, Poland absolutely. later on for many so years. So she really cared for, and she wanted to achieve that political stability. So this is her great achievement. Absolutely. And also um, the fact that she managed to um, kind of deal with the aristocracy those times. Uh, which were very demanding and also disrupting the situation in Poland. But when the king was so much dependent on what, what the aristocracy felt, decided, or who they wanted for the king, it needed to be a difficult ruling. Absolutely, yes. And um, also that she was a woman. It was not very common at that time. So, uh, well, women could rule us um, priories um, in monasteries, but um, they were not often in that political position. Yes, so she needs to also to consider many um, proposals when it comes to her uh, supposed marriage. So one was unfortunate because it was um, the Henry of Valois dynasty and um, there were some, some trials to, to marry her, but pol again, politically, it was always that um, King's daughter would be married to, to a man who is a ruler of a different state just to, to confirm uh, some political um, situations. situations and, yes. so and that's it how was, she married Stefan Batare eventually. Exactly. And just, um, it enabled her to, to actually stay a queen as she was, because there was no agreement for her to be um, unmarried woman on the throne. And that's why she had to marry uh, Stefan Batory. Uh, just, just to wrap up this episode, but what was her um, influence on Batare as well? Did they because uh, it is known that she stayed in Warsaw and he was traveling around the country. So it was also first to, uh, I should firstly say that it was common in the past that in such marriages that were political marriages or be marriages between important families that um, wife and husband, they actually lived separately. They had their own lives. Um, the marriage was on paper and it was really common. But um, on the other hand, she, she wanted really to, to get that personal relation with him. And um, she supported his, um, his um, um, actings and, uh, well, she, she lent him money for, for his for his um, military expenses. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so she was in influential, but also kept the balance. Yeah. And very important woman, also the second Polish king, being a woman on the throne. And that was Anna Jagielonka. Stay with us for another episode to learn more about women in the royal castle in Warsaw. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.